All right, all you base and premium heaven, 2020 Subaru, sorry, sons of bitches. Today we're gonna talk about the differences internally, really what, what matters inside the new 2022 Subaru WRX lights. Hey, one, one, all right, so the main features that differentiate the base model from the limited and GT classes, and I should say base and premium, is going to be obviously the sea light. Everyone wants the sea light. I'm sorry they didn't come with it in the base premium. What are you gonna do, you know? You're gonna buy some $1,100 per side headlights like we did and plug them in and realize they don't work when you plug them in? So let's go ahead and see why they don't work as well as some of the key differences between the two headlights and why they look the way they do when you're on the road. Sorry to interrupt your video stream, but you got a body. I wanna cover it. We got these sweet shirts, we got a whole bunch of other ones. We got vintage black, we got regular black, we got blue and some other stuff. So check it out right now, surgeon.com merch section. Let's start with the parts that you guys see from the outside of the headlight. So this is the housing as we call it, or the bezel. So this is pretty much through the lens what you see. Obviously there's no C light, there is a C shape, but there's nothing there to illuminate it. With this set here that we're working on, this is our stage two honeycomb set. These we remove the chrome off of the outer housing just to kind of dull it down a little bit. We can put a strip there externally mounted if you want that, but let's see the other things that we can do as well as kind of what makes this up. Now, obviously the turn signal and parking light are actually both inside of here. So this is just a classic incandescent bulb. So this is a 7443 bulb. What that means is that's dual filament. So it works as both the parking light and the turn signal. So this you can replace with an LED, a switchback, which would be white for parking light and then amber for turn signal. Gives a little bit of an update, but once again, it is just the bulb in a reflective chrome cup with a cover on it. Now the other parts that you'll notice when you are looking at it are the projector. This one we remove the lens because we are etching it, but this is at a low intensity, your daytime running light. So when you turn the car on, drop the e-brake, this comes on at a lower intensity. And then when you turn your low beams on at night, it just brightens up. This is on all the time. Your parking lights are gonna be on the first click of the light stock and stay on with your low beams. We also painted the amber reflector, a satin black. <laughs> Gotta blow the dust off before we put it together. But we painted the satin black just to kind of doll out the side of it. And this is also lit up by an incandescent 194 bulb, which is right here. You can replace that. So it'll be a brighter or like a more uh, modern look. They're black, so we just take them out. Now let's look at some of the other key features inside the headlight. You'll see a whole lot of, there's nothing there. What's going on? All the really, the kind of guts of the headlight are gonna be on the side of it in the middle, but this whole area is really just dead space. There's nothing there, which is kind of funny to me. Cause like, why do they make it so big? I don't know. The projector itself, a couple of key features. This one is not active steering and it's not adjusting height. The active steering, those go left to right as you turn the steering wheel, there are sensors that tell the headlights to turn. In the limited model, which we'll check out in a second, these don't have that. They are height adjustable with this little guy here. And let me actually show you, if you ever wanted to adjust the height on your headlights, what I've noticed are a lot of manufacturers aren't necessarily leveling them the same from side to side. So like your driver's side is higher than your passenger side, you can actually just put a Phillips head screwdriver in there. And as you, this one's too small. I need a bigger one. All right, we got old trusty here. So as you turn this, you can see the gear turning. And on the inside, what that does is it heightens and lowers this. The screw is gonna go in and out and that will allow the headlights to aim up and down. So they still are adjustable, they just don't go up and down automatically. They don't go up and down automatically with the height of the car. The newer cars, as well as the 15 to 21 models of the WX Limited and all STI trims have a sensor in the rear sway bar that tells the leveling motor when to go up or down. Pretty cool. The other thing that's kind of neat about these are the projector is actually the same as the new 2022 and up BRZ as well as the GR86 cars. So this unit here is the same as those two because the same manufacturer, Ichiko, makes these headlights that makes the BRZ and GR86. The one thing I do wanna highlight for all of these projectors are a lot of new cars have this little dead area. So I'm gonna put a picture of my personal 2022 WRX when I had it, uh, this little dip in the cutoff. Now what that's for is typically going to be when oncoming traffic is coming towards you, they're not gonna be blinded by your headlights. 
This little dip is a little lower than I would think would be necessary for that. So I'm not sure if that's like a new like feature for like aiming or like maybe the eyesight technology in the higher trim cars, but it's something that I think is personally a little bit distracting and kind of annoying. And I think it creates a dead spot in light output really where you want it to be, which is directly in front of your car. So I'm gonna have Jordan zoom in on this little, it's very hard to see, but this little nub right there. So we'll put this picture either side by side or up and down here. But this little nub, th this whole area, this open area is where the light comes out of the headlight. And anything in the way of that is gonna block that light output. So that little nub right there is creating this dead spot in the light output. So once again, I don't know why they did that. We can shave that down, which is what I did in my GR Corolla, because it has the same thing. And that kind of fixes that. The other thing with these is just like the, just like the 2018 and up STI, these are by LED. So this little shield here that has that nub is actually going to go down when the high beams are on and then go back up when the low beams are reactivated. So all this does is let more light output and higher in the area in front of you. So we did put a demon eye in the top here, so that's what this little board is. It's gonna create a multicolor effect in here that'll light up the etching. But overall, that's the internals of the WRX headlight. It's actually very simple. All the LED PCB boards for this projector are actually on the projector itself. So over here, it's, it's literally nothing. It's just wires that go directly to this unit and then wires uh, on the back that go to the turn signal bulb with this gigantic thing. Why is it so big? I don't know. To reach it from the wheel well, but still it's... That's the base and premium models. Let's go check out the Limited and GT. All right, Richie Riches, let's see what you got going on in your headlights. So these are gonna be the Limited trim and GT, which is like the top tier. These look a bit different. So instead of having that large plastic piece up there, we do have a proper sea light. Wow, congratulations. This area, which was the incandescent bulb, is now a full LED board. So I'm gonna pop this open and show you what that's made of. That's a good noise, right? So you'll also see this piece, instead of mounting to the front housing, mounts to this sea light encapsulation, which then mounts to this housing. So a couple different pieces as far as removing them. When the cover comes off, we have this small optic here as well. So what this does is there are, actually, let me take this out too, dude. We're already, we're already this far. Let's get it a little further. All right, I'm not gonna take it off. The reason being is this is plastic welded in these two spots. I don't wanna take that off. Sorry guys, to be honest with you. But what this looks like underneath is there are six LEDs in this area. There's a cluster up here and a cluster up here. Now these top and bottom clusters have two amber LEDs and one high powered white LED whereas these clusters here have one of each. That way the turn signal is brighter than the white, which for most applications you're gonna want that. If you wanna see when you're gonna turn, they don't really care so much when you're just driving the white lights. So that's like a safety feature. What these do is they have a sphere on the bottom. The light, when it hits that sphere from the LED chip, it disperses, and then the front has these reflectors, and all these do is just create a wide cast pattern so that people can see when you wanna turn. Now this goes over it just to hide all this stuff because it's not the most appealing. So that is the turn signal and the parking light as opposed to the base which just has a bulb. These are not upgradable, those are. So if you wanted to do like a dual filament amber LED or a dual purpose amber LED, whatever, you could still have amber running light or you could switch it for red if you wanna get pulled over or whatever. These ones can't touch it. We did have LED boards made for these, multicolor, but I didn't see a big enough market to like produce them. Sorry. If you want them, let me know. We do have our halos for these, which mimic the shape. You'll see those in a minute. That is the running light, turn signal, and sea light portion. All right, other pieces of the puzzle. There is no bulb for the amber marker. It's actually an amber LED. So that's not changeable either. Once again, we are blacking these out. So we're just simply unplugging that. This part is gonna fit right in here. Uh, Ichigo does a great job of assembling their headlights in a way that makes sense. So you can see those two tabs snap in. There is a larger screw hole for this mounting to the lens, the front lens of the headlight, and then that screws in the corner. Cool, this goes over the whole thing. Caps are off. Now that's done. Let's talk about the fun, which is the internals. This one's a little more complicated than the base model. So I think I might bring this over to the lit area and show you what's going on with all this stuff. This is the part that stumped us. So if you look on the back side, both of these plugs are the same type of plug. They do have different wires going into them, but with previous years, you were able to use 
the higher tier headlights, so the limited WRX and STI on the base and premium model for the WRX. 08 to 14, 2015 to 2017. After that, the STI got a little more complicated, just like these ones. So when I plug these into my premium model of WRX, nothing happened. Nothing for parking light, nothing for low beam, nothing for high beam, nothing for turn signal. Everything was just kaput. The big reason is these use a Limbus system, which is data driven from the car. So this is looking for a signal from the car to tell it when to turn on certain features. With the base or premium, that is just a typical positive switch headlight. So it grounds it, it sends positive constant power, and things turn on. With this, it does need that data signal. It's looking for a certain value of voltage to turn it on. We did approach a manufacturer about creating a module that you could plug into your base or premium WRX and it would decipher whatever the headlight's looking for, feed it that information. We got the footwork done, but once again, I didn't see like a huge market for people buying $2,400 in headlights as well as a module to put it in their car. If you want something like that, once again, let me know. But this one, let's take a peek. So this whole area that wasn't being used is now being used. This here is a full like PCB and chipset that communicates, like I said, with the car's computer. The projector is the same exact unit. Like everything is the same, which is very funny. Like all the markings, the backing, they're identical. But this one needs that signal from the car in order to work, which is very strange to me. I'm wondering why they even tied it into that system if it just works simply with the base and premium. This one does have this large cradle here, and this is the height and steering responsive motor system. So down here, there's a motor that's going to turn this. Don't worry, I can turn this without hurting it. But this, when you turn right, it's gonna turn the projector right. You turn left, same thing. And then on the back side, let me back up. These do not have auto leveling at all. They are just steering responsive left and right. There's no up and down. So the 20, 2004 STI through 2014 STI or WX Limited had a little switch inside the cabin or a dial that you could rotate to either have lights go up or down. The 15 and up to 2021, WX and STI, WX Limited, had a sensor on the rear sway bar in order to do that automatically. These new ones don't have that at all. It's just steering responsive left and right. So if you wanna adjust your headlights, it's gonna be the same thing as the base premium right here. Just use that screwdriver to turn it and that'll allow you to either aim them up higher if you feel like you're not seeing far down the road enough or lower if you feel like you're blinding people. So that is the AFS or steering response system for this headlight. Like I said, that's the same. The other plug here is gonna be for the C-Light. So it has this small access area. This one looks like it has the same kind of stamp for it. It's just not cut out. Once we're done modifying the headlights, instead of having to trying to plug this in while I'm getting these together, I'll just access this little hatch afterwards and put that together. So. That is the overview of both of these headlights. Once again, as far as light output goes, let me just speak on this. These projectors being the same, you will still have that same little cutout in the output. Because these are not accessible from outside of the car, there is no way for the Limited or GT models to increase or change the lights in the headlight at all. With the base and premium, you do have the option of upgrading the turn signal and parking light as well as the amber light. But as far as low beam or light output at night, you're capped off. Now, having one of these cars and being a professional headlight whatever, I was fairly impressed with the light output. It's not horrible, it's not the best that I've seen. Like obviously a lot of the products we have increase light output. So I know like compared to even my Blob Eye STI that I upgraded the lighting on, that is a bit brighter but I was still fairly impressed with the light output of these compared to other modern cars. The one thing though is, as far as upgrading, so if you wanted to upgrade the bulb, once again, there's no way to even access that. If we were to open it up, we could do a projector retrofit with an LED unit, but the other issue is the front shroud that goes on the projector wouldn't fit a larger unit. You'd have to try to figure something else out. So if you do want to increase the light output, which a lot of you folks do, I did myself, we actually developed our own fog light brackets for this car. Now, these fog lights are a different bolt pattern than the previous generation, 
These will fit the 2022 WRX and up, as well as the brand new Ascent. These will encompass either the Morimoto 4Banger or the Dio Dynamics Elite Series. So let's take a peek at those options right now, just before you guys take off, just so you know what's in your headlights, as well as what can you do to see further down the road. These are the two options that we currently have available for your 2022 and up WRX. Now I didn't fully assemble these just because whatever. This is going to be our four banger bracket. So these hold the four banger, they're fully adjustable. There's an adjustment screw and spring here. So you can aim them up or down. And with the four banger, you can choose from a pure white or an amber yellow color. These come in two different outputs, the NCS or HXB. Either way, it gives you like a nice crisp cutoff line, a very far output. The other thing too, is if you're looking for like that kind of fog light pod, like off-roady look, it's pretty cool. And the fog light bezels are a little elongated from side to side. So this shape actually fits really nicely in there. The other option we have is going to be the Diode Elite Series. So these also come in pure white or a bright amber yellow. These also have a amber backlight that you can T-tap into like say your turn signal. So the fog lights would actually turn a amber color with your turn signal. You can also tap them into your parking light or your DRL. So kind of a cool option. These are also fully adjustable. There's usually a adjuster screw and spring here. But yeah, fully uh, stainless steel, powder coated, really nice fit and finish. And these are available just as the fog lights with brackets or we get to sell the full kit. So if you have a base model or a premium that didn't come with fog lights, you can upgrade yours using these and OEM Subaru parts. So those are the differences between the base and premium or limited in GT for your 2022 and up WRX. Let me know if you have any questions, if you wanna see anything or explore anything else. But overall, like I said, if you have questions about trying to put these in your base premium, we might be able to help out, we might not, we'll see what's up. But if you guys are curious about that little dead spot in the light output and wanna know a little more about that or trying to fit these in your base premium, let us know. Either way, give us a follow. We're going to do some more videos on the new WRX as well as a few other cars. So give us a follow. Give us a like. Leave us a comment. You know the deal.